Hello, my name is Sarah Gray from Funky Fossil. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel today. Um, please do uh, like and subscribe, it's a new channel, so uh, it'd be great to have you join me for any content that I add, which I'm planning to do on a regular basis. Today, I'm taking part in a YouTube hop with some fabulous creators um, from the Crafting Together With All Brands Facebook group and you'll see the uh, links to their um, their videos in the description box below so do check out what they're doing and the theme that we've been given for july for the, for this particular hop is um upcycling and i thought i'd share a short uh, demo easy demo with you about how to upcycle a plain pencil case um, with stencils I'm using some of my funky fossil stencils some acrylic paints and also some gilding flakes it's really simple and easy to do so let me just take you through the uh, products we'll be using and then we'll get into the making the pencil case that i'm working on is um one from i think it's from hobbycraft and i got a job lot of these years ago um it's a good size one i think it's about a5 actually in in size so the thing to consider when you're um, looking at uh, looking for fabric items to stencil onto with paints is just looking for things with a relatively close weave fabric. So obviously, you don't want your um, paints or inks to be going right the way through, and you want to get quite a crisp impression. So this has got a nice um, nice cotton finish to it. Now, of course, if you've got skills in the sewing department, then you could just um, stencil onto fabric and make up your own items. Uh, that's just not something I have in my locker, so I'm going to use something that's pre-made. But actually, stenciling onto plain fabric, which doesn't have zips in or seams to work around, um, can even be easier than, than what I'm going to show you here. The paints I'm going to use in the demo are by Indigo Blue, which I absolutely love. Um, and I've got some of their metallic paints, and some of their, their uh, more matte acrylics. And the fab thing about indigo blue paints is acrylic paints is that they're also um, suitable for use on fabrics as well. Now, this isn't something I'm planning to put through a washing machine, but uh, certainly they have lots of guidance and information about how to use their paints on fabric uh, and be able to have garments like aprons that you may also want to be able to wash. But they're a lovely dense consistency and great for stenciling onto fabric. And of course, of course, on paper crafting too. I'm also going to use another indigo indigo blue product uh, is um, in this demo, which is their gilding flakes. Uh, again, another fabulous product. Uh, something I actually stock in in the Funky Fossil store, um, and something I highly recommend. It gives a great finish on fabric. Of course, I'm going to be using some of our stencils, and I've got two of our newer stencils here that have come out in the. Um, the June release, which is our hibiscus frame and our hummingbird. So I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with that. Other than that, to um, create a decorated pencil case or pouch um, like this, you're just going to need some stencil brushes for using with um, your paints and also um, some um, cut and dry foam, which uh, enables you to apply the, um, the uh, fritter glue, the indigo blue gilding flake glue onto your fabric too. I'll show you how we use that in a little while. However, let's get on to actually doing some making and getting some paint onto our project. So I've already put some um, white paper in the middle of my pencil case just to um, partly give it a bit of rigidity, but also um, it just ensures that there isn't any kind of paint that goes through um, uh, to the other side of the pencil case. And in the case of using the glue, you, know, you don't inadvertently stick your project together, which is the kind of thing I would normally end up doing. I'm going to start with our hibiscus frame um, and I'm going to use a bit of masking tape to, um, to just cover up these two bits of the, of the uh, circular frame because I'm not going to actually use the whole of the frame. I just want to use the flower for this design. It's a nice, big, strong strong design so i'm just going to take some of that frame out of the equation so i don't inadvertently um, put paint through onto it i'm just gonna that's it just scrape it back a little bit so it doesn't interfere with the actual pattern itself 
Now, um, I'm also just going to add a little bit of tape. I won't need to really hold this down, actually tape it to the project, but just a little bit of tape down this edge here where I can see there is the potential for me to accidentally apply paint where I don't want it. So when you're using a stencil on, on a project, just have a look and, and see where you think there may be any risk of um, you kind of covering or um, taking your mediums uh, past the design that you want to stencil. Just moving this down a little bit so that it's nicely positioned on my on my pencil case. I do love the I do love um, these larger pencil cases. I do have several of them. As I said, I did buy a job lot uh, quite a while ago, and um, I, I have decorated quite a few and used them. Because when you're stenciling through a uh, or uh, using uh, acrylic paint through a stencil, you don't want to have too much paint on your brush. I've got a nice big uh, stencil brush here. It's got a bit of a dome to the top of it, but it's a nice um, sturdy bristle. So it's going to enable me to pounce down quite, quite firmly. Um, because I'm not wanting to pick up too much paint, I'm just going to pick up some that's already in the lid. And this colour is... Uh, maiden blush. It's a nice kind of um, pearlescent shine to it. And you can see now I'm just dabbing the paint off onto my glass mat because I'd rather not take too much paint directly to the fabric first of all and it also enables me to distribute that, pa that paint uh, over the bristles so when I'm dabbing down it's um, it's got nice coverage. And then all we do, and I'm holding the fa I'm holding the stencil as I go, just to try and ensure that it's making contact with the fabric, um, so I don't get too much leakage. So with the with acrylic paints onto fabric, it's almost the drier the paint or the thicker the paint, the better, because you don't want something that's too fluid and is going to bleed. And this is a dark blue um, fabric, so the, I'm thinking that this nice, this kind of strong, vibrant pink will pop nicely off that dark blue base. And you can see I'm pouncing directly up and down. I'm not brushing. It's not like when I use my um, blending brushes with inks. I'm wanting to actually ensure that the application is direct straight down to the fabric. And this is just now a case of building that colour up to so it's um, as strong and as dense as I want it. A little bit more. I was thinking there's a bit of the design there that I don't necessarily want. I wonder whether I'm trying to avoid too much of that. Picking up too much of that with my pink. There we go. Well, I'm not going to clean my brush, but I am going to now pick up a bit of this lovely strong yellow. And this again is indigo blue. I think it's their banana custard. I'm just going to pounce over and hopefully we'll get a bit of a blend, a bit of softness there between the colours. A bit more pink. And the banana, the yellow isn't a, one of the pearlescent indigo blue colours, so it'll have a slightly different finish to it. A bit more. And you can see even on the glass mat, hopefully, if I'm still in shot, that um, even as I'm just pouncing down on the glass mat, it kind of goes into a slightly peachy pink colour, so it's not going to be too stark in contrast. There you go. So I'm going to try and um, maybe just get a slightly smaller 
a smaller stencil brush. I think this is a crafter's choice one. Well, what am I doing? I'm going into the yellow. That's no good. There we go. I was going to go into the green um, to do a bit of the foliage. It is a yellowy green, so I think we'll get away with it. And this is another of the more metallic paints from Indigo Blue. And this one is a lime sherbet, so it's a very nice, vibrant, summery shade of green. You can see that as it goes on. I'm just going to carry on doing this while we build up the design, but just speed up the video a little bit. Hopefully you've got the idea of how, of how we're filling in the colour. So as you'll see, I've finished stenciling the um, hibiscus flower with the indigo blue acrylic paints. And I also went on to um, stencil the, um, the base for the hummingbird onto my uh, fabric. And I've left it all to dry. It's all now dry. It doesn't take long at all to just dry naturally. Now, the lovely thing about this um, hummingbird stencil is it's a, a two part stencil. So you've got the solid base, as we see here, I've used the same colours uh, as I did on the flower. And then you've got a, a kind of detail overlay that you can use to go in and add some further kind of decorative detail to your bird. I've already, as you can see, done some stencil surgery, as I call it, and put some masking tape around the solid, um, the open uh, part of the stencil, because we don't want to be getting any uh, flitter glue in there. So that's now nicely blocked off. And I've just positioned the stencil over the solid base and I'll add a little bit of masking tape um, on this side to avoid any glue going where we don't want it. But just exactly as I did with the, with the paint. Now I'm going to, uh, rather than using paint for this layer, I'm going to dab on some uh, gilding flu, uh, gilding flu gilding glue um, which is the indigo blue flitter glue crikey that's a mouthful isn't it so this is a product that they've designed uh, specifically for using with gilding flakes and it is absolutely wonderful and the way uh, that um, you many of you will have seen uh, Kay use it is simply to squeeze some out onto a piece of cut and dry foam a generous quantity there and uh, you could use a palette knife or as I'm going to do here just a kind of lolly stick to just spread that over the um, foam just let it sink in and that will effectively create almost like a little little ink pad I may have been a bit over generous with the glue on there now glitter glue stays tacky so um, it will mean that this cut and dry foam pad will remain uh, tacky once you've used it so just um, think about how you want to store it because you can keep reapplying glue into this and uh, using it for a, a long time but if you're anything like me it will end up stuck to lots of things in your craft room um, so maybe put it in a little bag or seal it up somewhere so it um, the, the tacky uh, surface of it doesn't end up causing you problems so i've got the um, the glue uh, on the the foam and I'm going to simply pounce through the, uh, the stencil onto the fabric. And just a kind of light, a fairly light touch with this. You can see hopefully um, the glue as it's sitting on the mylar. And there's no hurry with, um, with using this ad uh, adhesive because as I've said already it stays open so you've got time to do some clean up wash your stencil particularly because just like the cut and dry foam your stencil will remain tacky um, with the glue so it is one thing that you do really want to wash off your stencil for future usages i'm just hoping i've got this all covered 
again we want this uh, overlay to be nice and detailed nice and crisp on our design so i'm hoping i'm not being over generous and it's not going to be squeezing out underneath the stencil pattern this is just some added layer and some decoration so again with the gilding flakes it doesn't need to be perfection okay i think that job is done so put my um foam safely out of arm's way and i'll lift my stencil up and you won't be able to see anything at the stage i'm putting it to one side but obviously um when you're doing this you want to try and put it into water straight away now i'm just going to stop the video and come back to apply the uh, gilding plates because i've got glue all over my fingers which means we will make a complete mess uh, unless i just go and get some clean hands before i get started on the next step right i'm hoping that my hands are now relatively tack free and i won't just gild them rather than my pattern and now comes the fun part we can apply the um the gilding flakes to the uh to the adhesive on our design i'm using a chariot of fire from indigo blue which is just this is a really um, just a solid gold um color um gilding flake they do uh do variegated packs as well with lots of different hues and uh and, and different kind of tones in there but I thought with this one, it'd be nice to see um, how the hummingbird shows up just with the, the plain gold. And you'll see uh, in a pot, um, and I'm sure many of you will have seen gilding flakes in action before. Um, you get lots, it's very deceptive, you get lots more flakes than you initially think. And also nice big flakes too. Just going to, as we would do if we were gilding onto paper or card, rub flakes over our design and burnish them burnish them in with our fingers crikey that's massive that could have done the whole hummingbird with that one it's quite nice when the flakes are still this size because uh, they don't they don't have a tendency to be quite so fly away that is one thing that you or anybody who uses gilding flakes will always say is don't have your window open, fan on, because um, these flakes do like to fly everywhere. You can see I can put some of these large pieces that are coming away straight back in the pot and just keep rubbing with my fingers. And initially it really looks as if you've effectively just covered the whole thing in gold and you've got no definition of a pattern. But just keep gently rubbing as you go. And then we can start to just get the actual pattern to start to show through. I'm knocking this onto my mat and I will clean up more I will clean up properly later. Promise. We'll leave that to one side and so when using uh, the gilding flakes on um, paper or card then i would typically go back over uh, and burnish it with um i think more cakes and scoochies doesn't she it's almost like a kind of um a textured kind of foam that that um releases some of the uh, flake from the from the uh the paper but because it's on fabric i'm going to use a stencil brush to just brush away at it you can see just a light touch on the design it just appearing i just think the scoochie might be a little bit too abrasive on fabric let's see what we get so you can see how much more comes away when you just use that brush to help lift the flake from the parts of the um, the fabric that didn't have the uh, the glue on them I just love seeing the design appear 
And one of the joys, of course, of stencils is you could go back in and um, reapply glue if there's areas that you feel you've missed or you haven't quite got to, got the way that you want them to to look. I'm quite liking how this is appearing. And I think. I don't want to overwork it and start to scuff away flake from the areas that it's meant to be on. So I'm going to leave it as it is there because I think it's showing up beautifully. Let me just knock knock the flakes, the, the, the dust onto the floor. It is, I mean, it's a fabulous, gilding flakes, obviously, you know, however small they are, you get them back into the pot then you can continue to keep using them so they don't have to be those big initial flakes that you saw me pulling out of the pot they will um they will look uh fantastic um even when they're much smaller and have been uh, already kind of brushed off other projects previously so i think all the, all that remains to do is to um stencil a sentiment onto our pencil case and we will have um, something that is decorated and ready to use. So here we have our finished project. Uh, our simple uh, pencil case has been upcycled and made into something really bright and summery uh, that I'll enjoy using. All I did to finish off the project uh, off camera was stencil a sentiment at the um, the top exactly as I'd shown you before. I just used two colours in the um, in the blend there. I've added a few dots of paint uh, around the hibiscus and the uh, sentiment just to um, to give them a little bit more decoration. Added an eye with a bit of acrylic paint into our hummingbird, and that's about it. But really quick and easy to do. A few stencils, some acrylic paints, uh, some gilding flakes. And you can transform uh, lots of simple um, pieces of, uh, of kind of fabric uh, for home decor or clothing. Um, as I say, no, nothing I've done on here is uh, heat set uh, in terms of being uh, washing uh, washing machine proof. But there are certainly lots of ways to make your projects suitable for the wash. I hope you've enjoyed this, um, and that you will uh, like and subscribe. And also uh, hop along with us and uh, visit the other creators um, taking part in today's upcycling challenge because I know they'll have some fab ideas to share with you. So thanks again. I'm Sarah Gray from Funky Fossil and I've really enjoyed your company. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.